According to a recent study by MIT, 95% of AI projects fail. Most of these exist in the cloud. How did that happen? Let's talk about it. Hey Dave, Tim Crawford with Avoa and the host of the CIO in the Know podcast here in Park City, Utah. And I just wanted to take a minute and congratulate you on hitting 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's quite an accomplishment. And here's to the next 100,000. Well, welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. My name is Dave. Let's get started. So this is from a story that dropped uh, last month, August, uh, wherever you're reading this, August of 2025. And so it's about 30 days old or whatever. And I reported on it on my other channel, Dave is not AI. But it's interesting to look at the cloud computing angle of this. <laughs> and suddenly, you know, I did some deeper dives in what this study meant uh, in terms of AI failure. And it really reflects, I think, poorly on enterprises' ability to be, to be successful with cloud platforms. And I think the fault falls on both the cloud platform providers, which I think could do a better job, and also some of the enterprises that are leveraging cloud. So the news that 95% of enterprises have AI projects that fail, this according to a recent MIT study, and I think this is a wake-up call for organizations. You know, from my perspective, the core issues lie less in technology or infrastructure and more in how companies approach AI development and deployment. Again, by relying primarily on public cloud providers, many enterprises face challenges in coordinating data and aligning outcomes with business goals. So however you want to boil it down, enterprises are not good at AI yet. And so many of the first initial AI projects, generative AI projects that they, they scaled up, they figured out pretty quickly that things weren't working out for them. And I think in many cases, they just didn't have the talent they needed. They didn't understand the use cases for AI, how to leverage their own data for AI processes and services, and ultimately end up failing and cost the business money. And evidently, uh, it's a lot of them. 95% is way more than I think initially people thought they were. Obviously, there's some you know, learning curves in moving to any kind of technology, AI included, but that is abysmal. So these projects fail often because organizations lack the proper human expertise and operational readiness to build and train AI models effectively. I think that's really kind of the heart of the matter. So AI development requires deep technical expertise and years of preparation, resources most enterprises don't have. And so they're under anticipating the amount of resources and expertise they're going to need to solve these issues. And I think that the cloud providers aren't necessarily providing them the guidance that they need for the enterprises to be successful. They're throwing the tools out there and kind of hoping for the best. And just because they can build, you know, sample projects that build, you know, small little prototypes of generative AI, that does not mean that the enterprises are going to be successful with the cloud technology, the cloud AI technology. So enterprises mistakenly spend time building foundational models from scratch instead of leveraging pre-existing mature models from cloud providers, you know, and other LLMs out there creating delays and, and uh, you know, certainly inefficiencies that are going to derail these efforts. So the big problem with generative AI is that many enterprises out there want to build an LLM. There's no reason for you to build an LLM or a foundational model. You're going to want to use other, other people's LLMs, ChatGPT and others that are out there, Gemini, Grok, whatever. Um, the one that's going to be a good foundational model for your project. And when you're building AI, it should be leveraging small language models that are leveraging your specific data. So in many cases, enterprises are overcomplicating this. In other words, they're hearing about, you know, massive GPUs and the ability to kind of build an LLM that's going to take a month to train. That's going to be out of the scope of their ability to be successful. So focus on small language models, tactical use of business data, and I think you're gonna be fine. Evidently, most organizations are not doing that. So, and some of the cloud providers are here to blame. So I was looking at where these failures actually occurred, and more than 80% of AI and machine learning workloads are deployed on cloud infrastructure, public cloud infrastructure, such as AWS, Microsoft, and Google. And, you know, don't trust me, this is from Gartner Research on cloud infrastructure trends where the Gartner and, and analysts highlight increasingly reliance on public cloud providers for AI workloads due to scalability and cost efficiency. So what's happening is that 80% of the enterprises out there 
are trusting their public cloud providers is the way in which they're going to drive AI success. Obviously, public clouds are the easy button for AI infrastructure. You're able to go out and allocate a complete ecosystem that's able to provide you all of the tools and technology you need to build a generative AI system. That doesn't necessarily guarantee success. And so in many instances, enterprises aren't using these tools effectively. And in other instances, I, don't, I think that the public cloud providers are not doing a good job in providing technology that's going to drive success. Obviously, if you're seeing this kind of a failure rate, lots of things are going wrong. I think in many cases, the public cloud providers, which are overwhelmingly the more popular platforms to build AI systems, are letting some of the enterprises down. So public cloud providers offer AI tools and scalable platforms to accelerate projects. However, most enterprises fail to integrate these tools effectively with their existing data and systems. That's core to the patterns we're seeing that are leading up to failures. So this leads to a disconnect between the AI models and the business outcomes they aim to achieve. So again, using AI is only going to be a success story for you if you use AI that you leverages your own data and not leverages the data from other people or build these large LLM systems. We have to be able to put small language models, tactical use cases around the targeting of data and the ability to leverage data effectively to bring some value back to the enterprise by using AI. AI is very expensive, you know, five, sometimes 10 times that of traditional systems. And in many cases, enterprises are ceasing to understand how to target this very expensive infrastructure and not necessarily looking at the low-hanging fruit are the use cases that they're able to solve to bring success. So many organizations focus too heavily on public cloud infrastructure when neglecting the importance of underlying uh, their fragmented data ecosystems. Without connecting all internal and external data sets in a meaningful way, AI efforts cannot deliver actionable insights. Couldn't stress this enough. So they're unable to get to the data, they're unable to leverage the data, they're unable to even foresee uh, how this stuff should be configured to bring the most value back to the business. And that's where there's a disconnect and that's where the failures are occurring. So a lot of times when I mention failures, some of the, you know, AI project leaders out there will, you know, turn their pockets inside out and talk about how they don't have enough resources to drive failures. But I'm finding something, a di something a bit different. So AI project failures are not due to inefficient investment in infrastructure upgrades as vendors often claim. Instead, their failures stem from an inability to harness the full potential of existing data assets and align AI projects with strategic business objectives. So it's something that's more fundamental than I think many of the uh, AI leaders out there think, the people who are you know, tasked with building AI projects, AI architects. Uh, in many cases, it's their first time, but in looking at why they fail, in many cases, they say, we need millions of dollars to make this work. No, you don't. You're able to build small language models with a minimum of resources. You don't even need GPUs in many of these instances. What you're missing is your ability to target your own information to leverage it as a force multiplier for your business. So deploying AI at scale doesn't always require overhauling infrastructure. Leveraging cloud-based tools like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform enables enterprises to gain quick wins by integrating existing data sources and AI systems across hybrid environments. So unlike the seven-year investment in infrastructure in the past required support AI at scale, Previously, modern cloud and AI tools allow businesses to act immediately by renting computing power and accessing pre-trained models. So winning with AI demands a shift in mindset from building everything from scratch to accelerating from where you are. Enterprises need to focus on experimenting with cloud-based AI tools and scaling based on results, not just infrastructure upgrades. So the push from the cloud providers seems to be throwing, they want the enterprises to throw money at the problem. They want them to buy more infrastructure, buy more GPU services, you know, things like that. And I understand why they're selling stuff. However, that's not necessarily going to be the good thing for the enterprises out there. I think in many cases, enterprises are surprised in the fact that they're spending more money and accelerating utilization of resources at a huge cost, by the way, and they're not getting positive results that are returning from the use of these cloud resources. So this is stop the madness. I think we're doing so many things wrong, it's ridiculous. I think enterprises need to stop, adjust, upgrade their talent, get outside advice, figure out what they're doing wrong, redirect the project, redirect the resources, and try again. 
So for enterprises, the shocking failure rate of AI project highlights the need to rethink strategy. Success lies in building on existing data, leveraging mature AI tools from public cloud providers effectively, and focusing on immediate outcomes rather than long-term infrastructure overhauls. I couldn't agree with that more. Ultimately, this is something that needs to be strategic to the business. It needs to be risen up from the tactical you know, buying efforts of, you know, resources and trying to fix, fix information by throwing our fix systems by throwing money at the problem into something that's going to be more tactically focused, which leads to a larger strategy. So with this approach, organizations can transform the 95% failure rate into opportunities for sustained success in AI initiatives. So what's going on is we have a huge gap. We have a huge gap of the way that enterprises are building AI systems today in 2025, as I record this in you know September, and the ability to leverage these systems to gain additional value back to the business. And enterprises need to be willing to make the change. They need to understand that they have a huge problem. They need to stop relying on some of the promises of the hyperscalers out there in terms of you know spending money on AI. I think that's just gonna get you into a deeper hole. And when you're in a hole, stop digging. And focus on the tactical use cases that are, gonna, that are going to bring incremental value back to the business. Don't do these big moonshots you know, that are costing 10, 20, you know, sometimes more millions of dollars um, that don't reap the benefits as we're seeing. Focus on the tactical use cases, typically less than a million dollars, typically less than 20 people on the project team that are able to, in three to four months, deliver value back to the business. Build on that success, go to the next project, go to the next project, go to the next project, until you find sustainability in your ability to uh, move into an excellent state that's going to return the most value back to the business. That's what it's all about. So don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, stay very, very safe. Later.